Welcome to the Horror Interview Show, I'm Skullface, today I'm interviewing Steve Craig about co-directing Waking Nightmare, what was the inspiration behind Waking Nightmare? Well, my uh, director partner, Brian Farmer, uh, wrote the original screenplay, I think he was trying to find something that is uh, different, you know, a different spin on the horror slasher genre, and decided to... Uh, right. I, I don't know exactly. He doesn't know exactly where the idea came from other than the desire to come up with something nuanced uh, for the slasher fans. And as we uh, went on to production and everything, I think we found a lot of themes and things that we liked about the story, what that we were telling. And for me personally, I also experienced uh, sleep paralysis and uh, crazy nightmares and things like that that I tried to put into it visually. What did you like about the plot of this movie? Well, I think that it was a complex story that, um, and somewhat of a cryptic story that allowed me to, as a director, to experiment with uh, visuals, to try different genres. We were able to film uh, different sequences, almost in completely different genres. Some scenes are different than others, uh, which, which became a fun experiment. And I liked the story. I thought that, you know, in uh, it, it had sort of hidden relevant themes like male toxicity, um, growing up in a uh, growing up in a, in a traumatic sort of upbringing and uh, dealing with the cards that you're dealt, uh, trying to find some stability in the in a mad, crazy world. So uh, there was a lot that I found I could experiment with as an artist and also things that I related to in the characters personally. Do you like directing? And if so, what do you like about it? Yes, I absolutely love directing my, um, you know, I, I think, I think I'm kind of ADD and I love that I can, you know, focus on a million things at once. It's extremely hectic and chaotic. Uh, I love the element of collaborating with people. So even now, like while I'm working on my, uh, commercial productions and things for clients that I'm able to work with every department from uh, makeup and costume and hair to uh, set direction, and art direction, and, uh, the cinematographer, of course, and whoever I collaborate with in post-production. It allows me to put my creative mind into all these different sort of moves uh, that, that we all, of course, come together for the final product. Um, so I like the variety of it. I love having to stay on my toes and um, challenge my own creativity in the hard toughest of times I enjoy it what are some things directors have to get right when it comes to horror movies good question uh, what do directors have to get right for horror movies well the one thing that's good about horror movies I think and maybe not everyone agrees with me is that they allow for uh, you to try different things out especially now we see with a24 and, and a lot of independent and foreign horror that you know it's a place where you can try out you know uh, blending comedy or going to going uh, the distance with violence or psychological horror or uh, trying different things out so in some ways that's very liberating but in other ways it makes it kind of challenging because sometimes you know you're not you have to make a decision of what it is for the project that you want to get right um, so I think one thing that uh, comes to mind for just horror directing in general is pacing because you're uh, constructing a scare, as they say. So um, you're wanting to get the pacing right so that things build uh, up to a scare. Of course, so that also includes, you know, um, getting the performance right, the lighting right. Uh, you know, there's a lot, a lot of different things, as you can imagine, in filmmaking that could go wrong. So, so many different details. But I would say, as a, as a whole, you're trying to you're trying to get the atmosphere and uh, the pacing right. As a director, when you are watching horror movies, are you thinking about the directing side of things at all, and what kind of things are you thinking? Always, whenever I'm watching a movie, uh, not just horror, but of course horror as well, I'm always thinking about what 
what led to this moment um, from a technical standpoint, from a, you know, as, as I mentioned earlier with the process of directing, it's a series of collaboration and it's a series of decision making. Um, everything down to how you uh, how you treat the people on set, how you you know how you um, communicate with your cast and with your crew. So I'm often watching films, television, any anything I'm watching, I'm always I can't help but think about what it is that went behind the scenes in terms of coming to that decision, or how many things were sort of spare of the moment or happy accidents or something that like i'll watch and i'll think did the performer did the actor you know come up with the decision to say it that way or is that something that the director uh you know micromanaged to, to get that way or specified i guess i should say so you know i'm always overwhelmed watching movies about just how much uh goes into it i've, I've been fortunate to make the uh, lower budget projects that i have and then just uh, and, and even with those i just know how overwhelming it can be to have to make constantly make decisions what are you know what are these characters wearing how are they walking the speed the, the pacing the atmosphere the you know uh, everything camera angles lenses so um it, it could be overwhelming sometimes but when i'm watching things especially if it's a good scene i'm always trying to figure out what was the communication that led to that outcome were any scenes in waking nightmare difficult to film Waking Nightmare was filled with challenges. We had a very low budget and a small crew, and we were often faced with having to film several pages of, of script, of screenplay in one day, sometimes like 15 minutes, you know, to compare something like a Hollywood film, they might film, you know, a half page, a page, or, uh, um, you know, maybe no more than five pages. And we would sometimes have to get through 15 pages. And sometimes we would have to do that with long, uh, winded dialogue or walk and talks. Uh, or special effects that we needed to get right uh, because we didn't have much time or uh, resources to try them over and over again or clean things up and try it again. So I would say the whole production was riddled with challenges. Um, I would say something that's difficult to film. You know, I, it, it wasn't difficult, but the, the, there is the... Uh, climactic scene and I won't give away too much but it's where there's the most practical effects and it was the most it was probably the most fun scene but it was the one that we put the most effort into in terms of the set direction uh, in terms of obviously the practical effects which uh, my friends at Infested Films designed and executed for us um, and then of course yeah having to get everything right because we couldn't really you know clean up all the blood and try it over again so um that was it was the most fun uh, thing to shoot but it was also the most details that we needed to get right about it no do you have a favorite moment from the movie uh, i have two that one that i just mentioned and um uh, at the scene where the mother finds a bloody shirt and the daughter made for the main character's uh, laundry. Those are scenes that I think Diane Franklin, who's a actress that I always admire, uh, an 80s gem, I think that you know she came out of retirement to do our movie and she has some of the most unhinged, wild performances. So I think those are the scenes where I think she was really able to just let loose and they're outrageous and, and intense and darkly comedic, I, I would say. So, or maybe it's, maybe it says something about me, how screwed up I am. But when I see those scenes, I just laugh out loud at how unhinged and over the top she is. And I know that it's also intense and dramatic, but uh, it's, it, it, again, that blend of, of genre that I think I like about the movie. And um, those two scenes, I think because of Diane, uh, we achieved that nicely. Most productions have one credited director, but Waking Nightmare has two. Why was this? Yeah, so Waking Nightmare has two directors. Um, this was a production that was first conceived by my directing partner, Brian. I was working with 
him on other productions that he was doing and we had a lot in common in terms of our goals but we also had kind of different visions of what we wanted to do as directors and he sort of i think he appreciated my uh, attention to detail for you know visuals and things like that he was more into performances and um, collaborating with actors i think that's what really drew him to it he came up through the acting world so he came up with the idea for us to work together on the script that he came up with uh, so that I could bring more of a visual element or visual, unique visual voice to it. And I loved that idea. Like I said, it gave me an opportunity to experiment and be an artist, which is you know thrilling for me. And uh, we decided that he would be the director that focuses more on uh, performances and the actors. So he did a lot of the casting and working with the actors i did the you know i crewed up i hired people behind the scenes and uh worked with the crew and then of course i was in charge of all the editing post-production and all of that too uh, the visual effects so uh, i think it was a good uh good combination who are your favorite horror writers and directors I'm a huge fanboy of David Lynch. I know that he's not pure horror, but I think that he um, really taps into a uh, sub to a subconscious that can be more terrifying than horror, even though it can also be funny and, and dramatic. Um, but you know, again, like the, the worlds that he creates are so nightmarish um, and somehow oddly relatable, or at least engaging, um, and. I think he's a guy that can make uh, like something as simple as a chair somehow look terrifying. And that to me is virtuosic directing. So I can nerd out about him. Um, but then besides that, uh, I was inspired by uh, Lloyd Kaufman and Michael Hertz at Troma for showing the world that, you know, you could be a little punk and, um, and do it yourself and do it your, you know, your own way and go against the grain of Hollywood or anything uh, that requires high end production um, of course, Stanley Kubrick with The Shining, um, you know, John Carpenter, uh, a, a lot of the standards, uh, but definitely I, I like the independent DIY guys too. I'm, I'm, I know I'm, I know I'm probably missing a ton. Um, and then, uh, Lars von Trier again, I think, you know, he's not pure horror, but then lately, you know, the last decade or so, 15 years or so with films like Antichrist and the house that Jack built. Um, also Mikhail Hanukkah, who did uh, funny games and uh, directors that could really twist the knife and, and, and mess with your head uh, that, you know, make you feel hopeless and lost. Oh, I know uh, uh, another one is uh, Takashi Miike from Japan. We watched Audition, um, Brian, myself and the, our DP Seth. Uh, that was one of the big inspirations to, uh, uh, waking nightmare because of the way that he was able to blend uh, like almost like a romantic dr drama date movie and some of the most horrific horror elements. And, you know, it just makes you feel totally lost in uh, psychologically terrified. So uh, yeah, those, those come to mind. You've done quite a few horror projects. What do you like about the horror genre? I think that the horror genre gives you a lot of leeway to um, explore, not you know, as a as a visual artist, but also to go deep and dark and go comedic, and um, it, it, it just does. There, you're you're not as confined as you are with other genres like drama or comedy or even action. You can kind of try different things out and. Um, you can be loud and unapologetic. Um, but the other thing from a technical standpoint is I think horror seems to do very well in a low budget world in the, in the, you know, bracket, however you want to put it, the lower budget bracket or the realm of like DIY, um, for a number of reasons. Uh, you know, you could, you could spice up your film with practical effects, uh, you know, scary music, but, uh, also it does well. I guess this is from a business standpoint. Um, you know, they always say that horror does well worldwide, uh, lower budget horror, because um, 
you know, if you think about comedy or drama, it doesn't translate as well from con- country to con- or you know, from you know Europe or Asia and or America. Um, you know, there is obviously some things that we can all universally relate to, but comedy is a little different. You know, humor is a little different. English humor is different than American humor. Uh, drama and family stories and things like that. Uh, might be just different experiences but horror translates well all over the globe you know a a monster or a murderer or bloodshed or um you know psychological horror and all that that seems to translate really well no matter who it is so i think it allows uh lower budget filmmakers to find an audience on a global level which actors would you love to work with if you could choose Oh man, what actors would I like to work with if I could have anybody? Um, well, I love Gary Oldman. Uh, I think that he takes his craft very seriously and um, gives all you know has gives such varied performances, some of the best performances across many films. Uh, oh, and I know I'm going to forget a ton of people, and wish that I could go back and answer this better. Uh, actors that I'd love to work with. I mean, at this point, it seems like it would be really fun to work with Nick Cage because everyone's doing it. Uh, so it would be fun to see what he brings to one of my productions. Um, let's see. Yeah, there's... Um, let me see. Theme. I'm trying to think of, a, of an actress, too, that I love because I know that there's somebody I'm trying to think of. Um, I don't know. Damn, you got me. Will, Willem, Willem Dafoe. Um, I think I'd like to work with, um, um, uh, Jennifer Lawrence. How did you get into directing movies? So, uh, I got into directing, you know, I, I started doing it when I was in high school. I had VHS cameras and then eventually a mini DV camera and, uh, I would go out with my friends and make movies on the weekends. A lot of times it was for a class. Like if we were uh, reading something in English class, I would make a movie for it. And uh, then in film school, I directed a lot. I was constantly busy, you know, not as much partying as you're supposed to do in college because I'd be working on multiple uh, films sometimes at once. And then, um, you know, after that, I started directing corporate things to make money. Uh, moved out to LA, uh, where I met up with Brian and we directed a few things, you know, we directed a couple of things together and now I'm back to, you know, sort of directing commercials and all that. It's my favorite thing to do. And, uh, I'm, I feel very lucky because it is something I started kind of just on my own when I was, uh, 15 years old. What kind of projects would you want to work on in the future? Uh, my my dream would be to make a film for a24 um you know or um yeah i mean a, something like a24 but i uh you know e- e- even them i know they're kind of becoming so mainstream i don't know if there's room for for a small production guy like me so i wouldn't mind doing something independent again i have i have a bunch of ideas um and uh you know, one of them is a feature film that I have uh, that I'm writing that I consider Saw meets Dogtooth, if you've ever seen Dogtooth. Um, and, uh, you know, I have a short film that I'm working on called Milton, The Strangest Man Alive, that's um, closer to something like Eraserhead, uh, where, but the main character is an animatronic, uh, uh, very strange animatronic guy. He's the strangest guy alive. That's the point. Uh, so I'd like to continue to do things that are stylized and against the grain and um you know blend different genres and uh you know in the in the meantime i'm also enjoying doing my commercial productions where can people watch waking nightmare so waking nightmare is available august 18th on vod i know that it's eventually going to be available on apple uh amazon and tubi i don't know exactly when those dates are are supposed to be i think they stagger the releases so it'll be available on different platforms uh but the first initial release date is august 18th on vo day where can people follow you 
You can follow me on Instagram at Stephen Joseph Craig, which is uh, Stephen is spelled with a P-H, S-T-E-P-H-E-N, J-O-S-E-P-H-C-R-A-I-G. Uh, you can check my work out on my website, Stephen josephcraig.com but yeah feel free to follow me on instagram and tell me what you think of waking or uh, if you have any questions or anything i would like to thank steve for the interview people watching can like comment share subscribe and whatever else people do to videos if you're watching in the future